Shalom and welcome all my brothers and sisters, all of you. I welcome you to this video. Thank you for coming today. I hope you'll enjoy this video presentation. If you like this video, please hit the like button, which will help it get out to many people, to help many people. So hit that like button. Subscribe today if you can. And also don't forget to hit the bell on the top right so that you can get announced when I make a new video. These videos are made to praise the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and Him alone, and to help all those who want answers. That being said, we're going to be speaking about the biblical calendar according to the Creator in the Torah. Karite Jews have always, throughout history, all Israelites who follow the Scriptures alone throughout history, have always made it the most utmost important thing to follow the calendar of the Creator. We're going to be talking about two subjects today, the time of the Aviv and the new moon, sighting of the new moon. So I hope you'll take notes, I hope you will research this, and I hope that this will benefit you, because we want to keep the calendar according to the Creator. If you're new here and you want to follow the Torah, we cannot follow tradition, we got to follow the scriptures. That being said... Let's start with the Aviv. Where is Aviv mentioned in the Hebrew Scriptures, the Tanakh? The story of the Exodus relates. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 4, it says, This day you are going out in the month of the Aviv. It is to commemorate that we left Egypt in the month of the Aviv. This is what it's for. We are instructed to bring the Passover sacrifice and celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread at this time of year. We find this passage in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. We are commanded to keep the month of the Aviv and make the Passover sacrifice to Yehovah your God at night. Because in the month of Aviv, Yehovah your Elohim took you out of Egypt, out of Mitzrayim. Similarly, we are commanded in Exodus chapter 23, verse 15. You will keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Seven days you will eat unleavened bread as I have commanded you. At the time of the month of the Aviv, because in it you went out of Egypt. The same is commanded in Exodus chapter 34 verse 18. You will keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you will eat unleavened bread as have I commanded you. At the time of the month of the Aviv, because in the month of the Aviv you went out of Egypt. So the big question is, and you're probably asking this, what is Aviv? It is a Hebrew word that indicates a stage in the development of the barley crops at that time. This is clear from Exodus chapter 9 verses 31 through 32, which describes the devastation caused by the plague of hail in the time of Moses in the Exodus. We see there, and the flax and the barley were smitten because the barley was aviv and the flax was givol. And the wheat and the spelt were not smitten because they were dark. Afilot in Hebrew. Aviv and the harvest. Let's see how this connects. The Aviv and the harvest. The month of the Aviv is the month with which commemorates and commences after the barley has reached the stage of Aviv. This is very, 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 very important. Again, it commences after the barley has reached the stage of Aviv. Two to three weeks after the beginning of the month, the barley has moved beyond the stage of Aviv and is ready to be brought as the wave sheaf offering. The wave sheaf offering is a sacrifice brought from the first stalks cut in the harvest and is brought on the Sunday, which falls out during Passover. This is described in Leviticus Chapter 23, verses 10 through 11. When you come to the land which I give you, and harvest is harvest, you will bring the sheaf of the beginning of your harvest to the priest, and he will wave the sheaf before Yehoah, so you will be accepted on the morrow after the Shabbat, the priest will wave it. From this it is clear that the barley which was aviv, or ready, ripened, at the beginning of the month, has become harvest ready 15 to 21 days later. 
i.e., by the Sunday during Passover, Pesach. Therefore, the month of the Aviv cannot begin unless the barley has reached the stage where it can be harvest ready two to three weeks later. Very clear. That the barley must be harvest ready two to three weeks into the month of the Aviv is also clear from Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9, which states, From when the sickle commences on the standing grain, you will begin to count seven weeks. That's when you begin the counting. From Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15, we know that the seven weeks be between Passover and Pentecost, Shavuot, begin on the day when the wave sheaf offering is brought, i.e. the Sunday which falls out during Passover. And you shall count from the morrow after Shabbat, from the day you bring the sheaf of waving, they will be seven complete Sabbaths, seven complete Shabbats, period. Therefore, the sickle commences on the standing grain on the Sunday during Passover, i.e., two to three weeks after the beginning of the month of the Aviv. If the barley is not developed enough so that it will be ready for the sickle two to three weeks later, then the month of the Aviv cannot begin, and we must wait, wait, till the following month. Where is the Aviv mentioned in the Hebrew Scriptures? We find it in Exodus chapter 13, verse 4. The story of the Exodus relates, This day you are going out in the month of the Aviv. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. The story of the Exodus relates, again, to commemorate that we left Egypt in the month of the Aviv, we are instructed to bring the Passover sacrifice to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread at this time of year. We see there, keep the month of the Aviv and make the Passover sacrifice to Yehovah your Elohim at night, because in the month of the Aviv, Yehovah your Elohim took you out of Mitzrayim, Egypt. So we see that over and over again. Now let's talk about what I was saying before. The new moon, sighting of the new moon. The biblical month begins with the crescent new moon, also called first visible sliver. The Hebrew word for month, chodesh, literally means new moon, and only by extension the period between one new moon and the next. The Rabbinite Midrash relates that when God said to Moshe, this month, Hodesh, shall be for you the beginning of months in Exodus chapter 2, verse 2, the Almighty pointed up into the heavens, literally pointed up into the heavens, at the crescent new moon, and said, when you see like this, sanctify, declare the new moon day. This rabbinical interpretation, interpretation, highlights an important point, namely that the scriptures never comes out and says we should determine the beginning of months based on the new moon. Why is this? For the reason that this is that the term for month, Chodesh, itself implies that the month begins with the crescent new moon. As we will see, this would have been obvious to any ancient Israelite present when Moses recited the prophecies of Yehovah to the children of Israel, and therefore there was no need to elucidate this con concept any more than with such terms as light or dark. However, due to the long exile, we have lost the use of biblical Hebrew in day-to-day -day speech. We do have this Hebrew language, the ancient Hebrew language, but as far as speech goes, that was lost. Therefore, we will have to reconstruct the meaning of Hodesh from the usage of the word in the biblical text using sound linguistic principles of Hebrew. He created the moon for holidays, for example. There can be no doubt that the biblical holidays are dependent on the moon. The strongest proof of this is in the passage of Psalms 104, verse 19 which declares he created the moon for Mo'adim, Mo'adim, which is the appointed times. It's very, very clear. The Hebrew term Mo'adim for appointed times is the same word used to describe the biblical holidays. 
in Leviticus chapter 23, which contains a catalog of biblical holidays, opens with the statement, These are the Mo'adim, appointed times of Yehoah, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their appointed times, Mo'adim, or Mo'adam, excuse me. So when the psalmist says to us that God created the moon for Mo'adim, appointed times, he means that the moon was created to determine the time of the Mo'adim of Yehovah, the Creator. That is the biblical holidays according to the Torah itself. Yes, we see this in Bereshit in the beginning of Genesis that he set the sun, the moon, and the stars in the dome to light for light on the earth and for the set appointed times. Sun, moon, and the stars. But of course the sun and the moon are for the appointed, appointed times. The moon specifically. Chodesh is related to to the moon itself. We were clearly taught in Psalms 104, and we know that it was not yet written, had not yet been written, when the Levitical priests and the prophets were around the time of the Torah. And the question still remains of how the ancient Israelites could have known this. The answer is that the Hebrew word for month, Chodesh, itself indicates a connection to the moon. We can see this connection in a number of instances where in which Chodesh, month, is used interchangeably with the word Yerah, the common biblical Hebrew word for moon, which by extension also means month. For example, in the month Yerah of Bull, which is in the English month Chodesh, in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 38. In the month Yerah, again, of Etanim, which is the seventh month, Hodesh, in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 2. Those are just a couple examples of two words that counterchange each other. Another proof of Hodesh is related in, to the moon, Yera, which is the phrase, a Hodesh month of days. Genesis chapter 29, verse 14, we find that there. Numbers chapter 11, verses 20 through 21 meaning a period of 29 or 30 days, which is equivalent to the phrase a uh, yera, month, or moon of days. We find that in Deuteronomy as well, chapter 21, verse 13, 2 Kings, chapter 15, verse 13, and so forth. There's more verses, but it's just a handful. Clearly then, Chodesh is related to yera, which is moon, which itself literally means moon. Now, what is the point of all of this? It's very clear in the scriptures. Now, I'll go into more detail. I have other videos as well with more details. But the appointed times and the special holidays of the biblical holidays of the Creator are based on the moon. It's based on the recognition that these were given for the appointed times to keep the holy days of Yehovah. So therefore, this is why Karaites and other sects of true Israel who never follow the traditions and uh, changes have to adhere to the Hebrew scriptures because the answers are found there in the holy text of the Torah and the Hebrew scriptures as a whole. So therefore, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be making more, God willing. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and also hit the bell to know when I make new videos. Shalom. Thank you so much for your time. Shalom.